In this example, we're doing a upstairs second floor balcony, and we're going to shoot that across some stud walls to show uh, shooting on a stud wall and offsetting that with a polyline. And then we'll do a little bit of each wall and the adjoining wall on either side. Let me show you what the room looks like. We're going to begin by orienting the laser to this back wall using this uh, tool called digitizing the x-axis. Do that we go left to right, one point on the left, one point on the right. And it tells us the uh, x-axis was set successfully. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my construction plane to the floor. select the point to lie in the parallel plane. So the construction plane was established at its eye level parallel to the floor. Because I'm going to do a perimeter here and extrude it up to a second floor, I want to do my perimeter at the floor level. So that's why I'm dropping the construction plane that's here now down to the floor. Now that we've done that, we're going to start doing a perimeter on the wall. I'm going to start with a two-point line. And uh, I'm going to bring up the laser view so you can see exactly what it is I'm doing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a little bit of this end piece on that wall. And I'm going to capture this wall so that I know definitively where this particular wall ends. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Capture a little section of wall. And then capture a bit of this wall. Again, so I can define where the ending of this wall is. Next I want to shoot is the stud wall. And to do the stud wall, I'm going to right click on my line tool. I'm going to go to 2D continuous open lines. That'll create a polyline. Let me go back to the camera view. And I'm just shooting this at the edge of the studs. And then we'll have to offset this. OK. And I'll hit the Enter key. There's our stud wall. We're going to need to offset it because it is uh, representing stud wall. So I'm going to offset it by the drywall. And we're going to put in 3 quarters of an inch. And we're doing lines, linear, distance, depth. I'm going to say OK. Start entity. And entity. I'm going to accept that. I want to come out. So now I've extended that line out by the amount of drywall. And to keep things neat, I'm going to delete the old line. Well, I still remember what it is I want to delete. And delete multiple lines, I'm just going to use this little, I don't know, Japanese sword thing. And it'll take all of those out. OK, now I've got to do some trimming. And I'm going to use the Smart Trim tool. Smart Trim both. And it tries to anticipate what it is I'm trying to get to. And then on this, I'm going to use the extend this line to this line. Extend this line to this line. Just doing a manual trim so you can see the difference. Then I'm going to break that. So I want to break this line at this line so that I can delete that section. And I want to break this line at this line so I can delete that little piece. And I'm going to grab those two pieces I want to get rid of. Again, use my little Japanese sword. OK, so we've got a perimeter here, which is offset by the stud wall amount. And this is what we're going to want to extrude up. So in order to see it extrude, I'm going to put this in an isometric view. Make sure that everything is visible. And I'm going to measure the ceiling height. This tool 
the Z depth is going to always measure the difference between where my construction plane is and where I point my laser beam. In this case, I'm pointing the laser beam up at the ceiling. So I was on the floor, which is where the construction plane is. My Z depth is between the floor and wherever I hit this. And this, I'm hitting this right now on the ceiling. And it's going to capture that height, which is shown right here. And it's on the clipboard. So next, I'm going to go to my extrusion tool. And it asks me what I want to extrude. I want to extrude everything I can see that's that we've already done on that perimeter. I'm going to accept that. I want a single copy. I'm not making changes to the X or the Y, and I am making a change here. I'm going to right click and paste in my Z depth height, and I'm going to hit enter. So now we've got the room extruded. Uh, next thing I want to do is move the construction plane to the ceiling. I can do that with this tool. And I just hit two connected pieces. Let me just rotate that so you can see where the new construction plane is. It's up on the ceiling. And we have right around in here that balcony. Before we do the balcony, I'm going to put that on its own In its own layer. So I created a new layer called Balcony by right clicking on Model Mode Levels. And it is the active plane. And of course, everything is visible right now other than digitized points. And now we're going to shoot that Now we're going to go ahead and shoot that balcony. There's a couple of ways we can shoot the balcony. The first way I'm going to shoot it is a simple three-point arc. And it presumes that the arc is um, constructed very, very well. That's a presumption I don't think you often want to make. But by just doing three points, it will create the arc. And if we take a look at this from the top view, you can see here's my arc. Um, I'm going to put in another layer and show you a better way to measure arcs. Right level, we'll call this the best fit. Now I've made the best fit arc. I can turn this, this, um, this arc that we created on a simple way. I can turn that off. I can turn off digitized points. Now we're on the best fit arc layer. And I'm going to make a change to how arcs are created. Instead of just using three points, I'm going to set this at some larger number. I'm going to say 25. I'm not going to try and shoot 25 points. Now what I can do is I can shoot a number of points along this arc. I'm going to go back to the camera view here so you can see. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to start out here. three points, four points. I don't have to do 25 points. If I did 25 points, it would create an arc for me at that point. But if I do less than that, all I have to do is hit the Enter key and tell it I'm done measuring, and it'll create the arc based on the points that I have established. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a bunch of points. I'm going to put the ETMM toolbar in focus and hit the Enter key. And it creates an arc. Now what I want to show you is the digitized points on that arc. And you can see that some of the points are inside of that arc, and some of the points are outside of that arc. So what it does is it creates an arc, but it makes it fit so that at no point are any of the actuals very far from the arc that you create. So it threads them in between. And here's the original arc that we made. You can see that they're different. So this best fit arc is going to best fit what's actually been created. All right, let's uh, put this again in a isometric view. Make everything visible. 
Now what I want to do is I want to extrude just this arc for a cap that goes on it. And since we made the construction plane that we created the arc on, on the ceiling, I'm going to shoot the bottom of this arc, bottom of this um, balcony, and it'll create this piece. So I'm going to go to my Z depth. <coughs> I'm going to take a point on the bottom side of this balcony cap. And now that gives me, again, the distance between the ceiling and this point, which in this case is about minus four inches, roughly. And now we're going to go back to our extrusion tool. It's going to ask me what I want. I'm going to say single. I want just this item. I'm going to accept just that item. I'm going to do one copy, no changes to X and Y again, and the Z depth is on our clipboard. I'll paste it in, hit the Enter key, and let me drop everything else off, and you can see that we've created a band where that balcony would be. And then we bring everything else in, you can see the full picture in 3D. I could further extrude sections of this to get like a railing, um, single. So I want this piece, this piece, this top piece, this piece, and this piece. And I'm going to accept that. And I'm going to make one copy. No changes to X and Y again. This time I'm going to say, I don't know how high they should be. I'm going to say 36 inches. And hit accept. And now I've got the second floor railing. Got this tool, bring it into focus. So we have here our digital representation of this room with a second floor balcony and the handrail.